how to reuse content throughout the year. Hello, it is John on the Marketing for Owners podcast. If you're seeing it on video, looking pretty flowery here in a corner of the room. It's pretty pink, <coughs> but it looks lovely. Content, 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 content. It is everywhere. People churn the stuff out. Content, blog posts, social media posts, videos, etc. Podcasts. Gosh, some people do them every day. Uh, <clears throat> but you don't need to churn out tons of content. There is a, there is a, a concept, well, well no, a, a thought in blogging that you have to keep generating new content, otherwise Google will forget about you, otherwise your readers will go elsewhere. But it's not true. There are many examples, uh, there are, in fact, there's many examples where yes, a lot of content is made, but they tend to be large organizations. They tend to be media outlets. Huffington Post, um, can't say Gorka because that all went, but BuzzFeed, all those kind of things. Even people like Social Media Examiner, they spend thousands upon thousands every month on their content. We're not talking about them unless you are huge, unless you are, then congratulations, well done. <clears throat> but we don't, the rest of us don't need to do it. And if you, if you want to release yourself from the overwhelm and from the pressure of having to constantly churn out content, this is a way around it. <clears throat> because what we tend to fail on is promoting that content or we write a post, we put a lot of effort into it, and that's it. Now, one of the reasons this came up is because in my team, uh, Carolyn uh, was talking to Jennifer and um, about some information. I think Jennifer sent in a, uh, a post which has all that we, that Carolyn was looking for, and in fact, I'd forgotten, within our post. It was one of our, of our, own, our own posts that had summarized all of our top posts in a particular topic. I'd completely forgotten we had it because it got buried in amongst everything else. We had not promoted it enough. We are now going to reuse it. Now this post was written quite a long time ago. On, our, on the Marketing for Owners website, you'll notice that we have removed the dates from posts so that, uh, that one, people who read don't think, oh gosh, that's out of date, because it isn't. We tend to write evergreen content that can be reused. But secondly, it removes the pressure from us of having to say, oh, we post twice a week or once a day or anything like that. Now, you are going to produce good quality blog posts. So you're only going to write about subjects that your audience needs you to write about. Now, if you're in um, an a normal business, those posts are generally, the most effective ones are questions. Questions that your customers or potential customers ask you all the time, answer them in a post. Or questions they should be asking you but they don't know enough to, to know to ask you, answer that as well. So that's going to be great information. Now, once you've got it, don't let it go. So promote it at the time, but then bring it back up. So as you write these, what I recommend is, first of all, get yourself an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet. In fact, better still, if you have any form of Google account, a Gmail account, anything, you have a Google account, you have access to Google Docs and Google Sheets, so Google's version. And the reason I recommend that is because it's online and this is a very simple thing. It updates, it's easy to share, piece of cake. So list every single blog post title in that Google Sheet. Then in the next column, put a full link to the actual post. Saves you having to go look it up later. Next one is put the date of publishing. In the next one, put a review date. Now some of these uh, things, if you're in a business where, where uh, you might talk about regulations or something like that, Put a review date in. Now, this doesn't always apply to every post, but some you may want to go back and check and you don't want to forget because say three years later, someone could find it. It's been superseded by new regulations. It's out of date. 
So put a review date <coughs> and then, then you can reuse it. Now you have a record to go back and you can recycle and you can do this systematically. But ways of reusing that content. One, how about once it's been added to your post, uh, to your site, maybe a month later, two months later, why not republish it in full on LinkedIn post, uh, LinkedIn Pulse, so on LinkedIn, effectively. Then a couple of weeks later, republish it on Medium. Now Medium is huge. Uh, Medium is uh, is one of Ev Williams, I think, uh, the guy who founded uh, Blogger.com, Twitter. Yeah, pretty cool guy. <clears throat> Medium is huge. And the reason you're going to put them on there is for the traffic. They have massive, massive traffic, way more than you'll ever, ever dream of getting on your post, on your own site, unless, of course, you're Huffington Post. Hello, Ariana. Oh, no, you sold it. Hello, anyway. So uh, you're, you may be thinking at this point, oh, but that's duplicate content. No, it isn't. Now, uh, a lot of us misunderstand duplicate content. If you go back, uh, I remember I had Johannes Mellon on the, uh, on the podcast uh, a little while ago. Can't remember, but look him up. He worked in the Google Span team. I actually asked him in the interview, what was uh, duplicate content? And duplicate content generally is the same content on your own website. And uh, in similar things, some people just keep a little bunch of um, blogs and just put the same stuff everywhere. But Google is clever. It knows. And if you do, if you set up your blog in the right way, yes, set it up correctly, not as obvious as you think, Google will know that yours is the original and that these come afterwards. So you're not necessarily doing this for ranking, you're doing this for traffic. Yeah, bring them in. Give a good thing, a good, a good message to get them back to your website. <clears throat> Another one is you can record a little video, a little video, a summary of that post. You can put that on YouTube. You can put this in Facebook. You can put it, uh, if you do a 15 second one, you can put it in, link, uh, in Instagram. You can put it in Pinterest. You can put it anywhere. Linking back to that post. That is reusing that post. This is new traffic to the post, but it's bringing it back again. You could write a Facebook back, uh, post referencing that one and link to that post. You can also write an update to that post. You can write a new introduction, a new inter introductory paragraph. Then, uh, and say something update, since this was done, we found da 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 da, yeah, and then the rest of it's the same. Then just hit the publish again, and it will republish with a new publishing date to the front of your blog. And again, you can then tell people, hey, remember that great post I wrote a while ago? This has been updated. You might want to check the new one out. And when you do these, record when you did it in that spreadsheet. If you use um, a tool such as Edgar, as Meet Edgar, which we use, then you can put these posts linked to them in a library on social media. And every now and again, it will bring it out in social media and, and bring new eyes to that post. This is, e well, this is a lot easier than it sounds. This really is simple. So this means you could perhaps write once a week, once every two weeks, and then in between you can push more effort to other ones. You can also, in newer, so you, you write a new uh, post about something, you can link to the old one and say, for more information, we wrote a while ago about this. It's all good. And even better if you can record which are the most, the best performing ones, which are then the better ones. So use your Google Analytics, which performed best, got the most views, got the most rank, then you repurpose those rather than all of them. Just takes a bit of thinking. Anyway, I think you get the gist. And by the way, if you think, oh gosh, John, with your spreadsheets and everything, you're all so perfect. No, we're not. We just recently, we thought we had this and we've actually just paid someone on Fiverr to go through our entire blog and re-reference the entire lot because we thought we had it and every, uh, and no, we didn't. We kept a spreadsheet up to a point and then forgot. 
So, happens to all of us. Um, finally, it is a Thursday, time for a Drive Time podcast. This doesn't need any introduction, but social media marketing podcast with Mike Stelsner, social media examiner. This is a weekly podcast. Mike Stelsner is entirely OCD about everything. He That means everything he does is brilliant and so well executed. Well worth your time. Go listen to that. You will enjoy it. I guarantee if it's not on your podcast listening, you've got to go try it. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, I'll be back with another tip very soon.